Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Barb Mitchell coming to you from virtual PTC 21. Joining me today is Mark Diamond, Chief Revenue Officer at Fiberlight. Mark, welcome to JSA TV. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So for those of our viewers who may not already know, uh, could you just tell us a little bit about Fiberlight? Sure. We're a uh, fiber infrastructure company. We operate a, and own a fiber network uh, regionally, about 15,000 route miles. Uh, predominantly, the largest network is in Texas, Northern Virginia, Maryland, D.C., uh, Atlanta, and Tampa Bay. And uh, we're interconnected to over 160 data centers and cloud ramps um, and serve up the top two data center markets um, in, so, in doing that. So, you know, I think 2020, I feel like I, I keep saying this, but we all know 2020 was a big year, but I mean, for you guys, it hasn't slowed you down one bit. Uh, you, you had a lot of exciting news over the last six months, including a recapitalization, a new CEO appointment. Tell us what this means for your, your customers and, and for the company. Sure. I mean, the recapitalization is obviously going to allow us to continue to fund all the products um, and projects that we've been involved in, um, specifically uh, that could be with large hyperscalers, wireless networks, carriers and enterprises, uh, as well as continuing our strategy to interconnect into the data centers as everybody's moving into digital transformation. That's a huge piece of what we do. So um, that's behind the money side of it. The second piece is with Chris Robbie joining, who comes to us from Altice, previously with AboveNet. Um, his background is very heavy on the engineering operations, service delivery NOC, um, and kind of the back office, which as we've grown significantly over the past three years, Chris brings a wealth of knowledge and best practices that I believe for our customers are just going to enhance that customer experience as we've kind of grown and they need more tools, more support. Um, that's what Chris is really bringing to the table. Uh, so we're excited to have him on board. So I know an, another uh, conversation that's been an important one that I know Fiberlight's been part of is, is just helping to close the digital divide, which has obviously, um, you know, become moved into the spotlight over the last year for, for lots of reasons. But what's the latest on the rural broadband rollout from your perspective? And, and what does this mean? What's the role that Fiberlight is playing in that? Yeah, sure. We're, I think it's two different areas. Uh, first, it's with the, the co-ops. Uh, so we have a lot of rural fibers, particularly in Texas and in that uh, Virginia area. And in, in both of those areas, we're working with the electrical co-ops in two different ways. One is to bring them fiber infrastructure where we have that network already in the ground where we can kind of supplement what they're doing on their fiber networks. So they may not find it cost effective to kind of build an area. We're able to supplement that. The second piece is we're offering them a um, completely diverse and, and alternative IP solution for their upstream, for the broadband providers, um, where they haven't had a choice in the past, perhaps, uh, before we put networks in that area. So, so that's a big piece. And then the second one um, is, is obviously this RDOF auction that you, you kind of uh, were making reference to. Um, those awards have come out and, and it's public that uh, the fixed wireless ISPs, as well as the um, MSOs were the big winners in that auction. And so it's a, it's a similar approach in that um, we're actually working probably with the MS, MSOs more from a, how do we complement the network we have in place? How do we connect islands that they may have in other areas back to each other so they can get their upstreams to those new areas? So early conversations, but that's how we've worked with them in the past. So I view that as just another evolution there. And then the same with the wireless ISPs. Many already are large customers of ours that are expanding new service areas and offering rural broadband. And we'll continue to provide them IP, build them complete networks, offer them dark fiber, construct new greenfield networks as well. Uh, so all those areas, uh, we're supporting that and hopefully closing some of that digital divide. Yeah, so important. It's so great to hear uh, the role that you're playing in that. It's such a, as I said, such an important initiative. Um, so, 
You know, there's so much more I think we could dig into on here. You know, we have only a few minutes to sort of get get through this with you. But, but you know, for our viewers who do want to hear more, where can they go to learn more about FiberLite? Sure, they can go to uh, FiberLite.com. And uh, I think the best place to start there is to click on the network piece and any of the products piece. And we have a, a full kind of overview in both places where they can see where our network is available and understand some of those products we talked about. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Mark. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. And thank you viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. Happy networking.